I come from Torres Straits, Saibai Island to be specific, that's where my mum lives at the moment. Um, yeah, I grew up on Saibai, just a typical TI kid that loves to fish, you know, nature is our fun, you know, we do everything that revolves around nature and um, yeah, growing up on Saibai it was pretty, pretty relaxed and there was times where I struggled at times, you know, to take education seriously. Back then, you know, education wasn't really anything. But yeah, I got, got an interest in playing rugby league, so I managed to get, a, get into a boarding school down in Yipun, St. Brennan's College, and made really good friends down there. And um, I've always had a strong interest growing up on Cyber, you know, building cabby houses, bridges, and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't know that you had to study to become a professional at it. So once I got to know engineering, um, yeah, it really appealed to me and I actually um, first went to University of um, Western Sydney because um, dad lives down there and I thought that you know it'd keep me in line but the thing was Sydney was just too big for me and everything was moving real fast and me being from Torres Straits you know such a small community I couldn't cope with the city life once I moved back you know got, got into the engineering program got into the co-op program and yeah never looked back if you go up to Torres Strait, it's a very relaxing life and to study it, you know, it takes a lot of dedication, commitment and, you know, even me being 22 at the moment, I still get homesick. I'm actually the first Saibai Islander to go through university straight after school through mainstream and to graduate as a civil engineer. I think I'll be the first of Torres Strait Islanders to graduate with an engineering degree that actually grew up on Torres Strait. Um, reflecting back on it that I've almost pretty much finished my degree, it's, you know, it's a massive relief and there was, to be honest, with all honesty, there was times where I just wanted to throw the towel in. I was getting homesick or, you know, wasn't coping with some of the assignments and, you know, I had personal problems outside of uni and the best thing about Central Cousin University was they were, you know, they were able to assist me in areas where I really needed help and there was times where I, I, you know, let my lecturers know that, you know, I'm struggling and blah, blah, blah. So they, they actually got out of their way to, you know, make sure that I pulled through, which shows um, how they take an interest in individuals. You know, they're not the Central Prison University lecturers. What I've noticed was they're here to help and they make sure that, you know, we as students benefit from them teaching us rather than just, the, oh, he's just another student, he's just another number that I teach. When I first attended University of Western Sydney, you know, like the lecture wouldn't even know my name, and you know, it was a bit of bit of a struggle. But once I came here, um, you know, all my lecturers they know my name, and you know, they know my mates' names, which just show, goes to show that, you know, they actually take an interest in in the students and make sure that we benefit from from their teaching. I got to work with um, Torres Strait Island Regional Council up in Torres Strait, which was pretty good. Um, it gave me the advantage of moving back home for say eight months so it was really good like it's um, that's my long-term long-term future aspiration is to return back back home to Torres Strait you know once I do all the stuff that I really need to do down here um, yeah we're just looking up there and you know gaining the experience from trades tradesmen senior engineers and you know everyone around you just stuff that you don't get taught at uni and I've also had the opportunity to work for Rio Tinto Alcan, which I've gained a cadetship with, Indigenous cadetship. Um, I did my last placement with them up in Weeper, and that was really beneficial to me because that's where I want to end up, is in the mining industry. And I really developed in my communication skills, my um, pro problem solving skills as well. And it was just a matter of, you know, going out there, gaining confidence, you know, I saw, um, communicating with people that are older than you, like your tradesmen, your operators, your contractors, and trying to manage them and, you know, putting all that stuff that you've learned through, through your undergraduate study and put that into practice. In the immediate future, I just want to take the six months off, move back to Torres Strait, enjoy a bit of fishing, um, chill out with family, especially mum. Yeah, just live, live at home for a while and um, in August, um, as of August, I'll be traveling to um, America and Europe and to Africa. So, yeah, take, take the rest of the year off, just a bit of travel and move back home. Because, um, yeah, in, 
in August during my travel, I'm going to go back to Africa. That's where my dad's from. So I'm going to go see some family and you know give them the good news that uh, one of the family members in myself is hopefully graduating as a civil engineer by the end of the year. I left at 13 and spent so much time away and that's one of my um, motivations that gets me through. Like I don't want that time spent away to go to waste. So it really motivates me to achieve what what people think of me and to be considered a role model to the young indigenous students both up in Torres Straits and around around um, Rockhampton that look up to me I feel like you know I can't let them down especially my community because they've invested a lot in me and um, yeah like the time I spend away it's I think it's almost nine years and to knowing that you know my career aspirations will take me away from the take me away from my own island for you know quite an quite some time and like to just have six months back at home is you know it's it's more than I can ask for. Over the years there was times where I couldn't go back home for for you know for a year only because like I get too homesick and um, as bad as it sounds like back in grade eight, grade nine I used to purposely miss the plane to come back to boarding school because I was just too homesick, didn't want to leave the islands then once I grew older I knew that Mum wanted me to go on the plane. It, it, it was for my own benefit, regardless if I was, you know, missing out on the community, missing out on the island life. As I grew older, you know, I reflect back on that. You know, it's, it was a little bit silly, but you know, at that time I thought that was the right thing to do, just to spend more time at home, and that just goes to show how passionate and how passionate I am about the Torres Strait, my island, and the people, people in my community. Gaining a cadetship allowed me to, you know, have finance, financial assistance in, you know, purchasing textbooks and, you know, any um, associated costs with uni. So yeah, the cadetship really helped me out, and I, um, I am really grateful for reacting to all that they have done. They offered me a contract that is really, really good. Um, can't really complain. So it's flying and out from Sydney um, to Pilbara, Ayano. So it's eight days on and six days off. And I'll be doing that for maybe six months or till I save up enough uh, money to actually relocate to Perth and fly in and out from Perth. And the contract is with, um, yeah, with Pilbara, you know, I'll be working under a superintendent engineer. So for the first, I'll be doing some site rotation as well, like, you know, rotate around different sites and get exposure to different sites of civil engineering on site and yeah it's yeah it's um it's a it's a re very rewarding very rewarding contract for all the years that I put in I reckon being from Cyber Island we usually get inundated with water our roads always damaged by um, cyclones you know little tropical cyclones and you know it's very it's very upsetting seeing seeing that happen to my community and there's not a lot of infrastructure that it's getting built up there and I I chose civil engineering because I knew that it my um, civil engineering would benefit my island community and I'm hoping that my short term short term career aspiration is to you know gain a um, graduate program with Rio Tinto and work for Rio Tinto to gain that experience and knowledge and skills that I'll be able to take back to my own community and help my people you know we we're getting inundated with water, you know, every hour roads getting damaged, um, seawalls breaking down the port, and they're all related to civil engineering. And I believe with my skills and knowledge that I'll gain while I'm down here, um, working for a big mining company will help contribute to, you know, improving the conditions and maintain the infrastructure that uh, is so important to my people. And it's kind of sad that, you know, we're, we're up there and sometimes people just turn a blind eye to it, hoping that, you know, it'll go away, but it's there year after year. Rather than just doing maintenance, you know, ma maintaining them every year, that's just, you know, that's dead money. And I believe, like, you know, if you put in a proper infrastructure to begin with, you don't have to maintain it every year. You have to, you know, build something that will with withstand all the weather conditions. And, doing that that's integral role of an engineer um, civil engineer so and that's that was one of my motives to choose civil engineering 
one of the elders told us, um, you know, uh, is an invisible garden basket. You know, the south, which is you know the mainland, it's a it's a big garden place. You know, take this um, empty garden basket and get get fruit and vegetables from down south. Which and fruit and vegetables are knowledge, education, skill. Um, you know, all that all that sort of stuff that you all the academic qualities and bring them back and feed the community. At that time, I thought, you know, that wasn't, I thought, I, I thought it was very funny at the time, you know, oh, you know, imaginary basket. But as I grew older, I, you know, I reflect back on what the elders said and it's, it's not my motive. And that's what I really want to do is, you know, fill, fill the basket up with as much knowledge I can while I'm down here and bring it all back so my people up in Torres Straits especially on Sub Island can benefit from it and yeah, that's that's my motive and yeah.